Hi, I am Bray, and I am on Team 9779 on the Pieters, and I am doing a video on electronics. So this is an overview of what's going to be in the video. There are going to be introductions to the modules, what does each module do, and data and power signal flow. Parts of the First Tech Challenge robot electronic system. So this is the 12 volt battery. This is going to be on every single robot. This is what sends power out to everything. It's 3,000 milliamp hours, and its chemistry is nickel metal hydrate. So this is the Android phone, also known as the brain. This is what will be sending and receiving data that is sent to and from all the modules on your robot. These are the different modules that will be on your robot, each serving a different purpose. There's the core power distribution module, the core motor, the core servo, the core device, and the core legacy. These are your motors, servos, and sensors, each plugging into their respective modules. And of course, we need cables to connect everything, and these need to be very well organized. Now that we know all the electronics on our robot, how does it all go together? This is a diagram from the Modern Robotics website, and this is showing all the electronics that will be on your robot. So of course, it starts with the Android device, which will then send and receive data from the micro to mini USB cable. This leads straight into the core power distribution module. The core power distribution module will take the data that it just received from the phone and send it to all the different modules. This is the battery that will plug into the core power distribution module so that the core power distribution module can send power to the other modules using these cables. However, the core device and the core legacy modules need to get power too but there are no power cables leading to them. Well, that's because the data cables also give power to those modules since they don't require much power. This is a diagram of the core power distribution module. As you can see, it has the power switch, the fuse, the six power pull outputs, the connector, the mini USB port, and the USB ports. Also, there are status LEDs that tell whether everything is working or not. The main job of the core power distribution module is to send data and power to all the other modules. Many teams replace the connectors on the core power distribution module and the battery with Anderson power poles. This is the core motor controller. As you can see, the core motor controller receives power, and based on the data it gets, it sends a certain amount of power out to the motors. Now let's take a closer look. On the left, you can see the mini USB port that receives data from the core power distribution module. On the right, you can see the encoder plugs, as well as the three power pole connectors, which lead to the motors in the core power distribution module. The encoders are sensors on the motors that will tell us how far we've gone. As you can clearly see, there's a servo and the servo controller. The servo controller also has a battery port, as well as six different ports for the servos. There's a data plug on the back. This is the core device interface, which is where you will be plugging all of your sensors in, whether they're I squared C, digital, or analog. There are many different ports for these. The sensors that are on the right are the touch sensor, the range sensor, the color sensor, and the integrated gyro. This is the core legacy module. You will probably never use this, but this is a module where you can plug in all of your older sensors and other things. And that is the Pi Eaters Electronics video. Check out our YouTube channel for more videos and tutorials, and also, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll try our best to answer all of them.